So we're going to continue our lesson on the expanded ledger, which was uh, chapter five, as far as you're you're concerned. Uh, the expanded ledger, uh, as you know, we have now expanded to revenues, expenses, and drawings in the trial balance, uh, and these all come from the equity accounts. The expanded ledger looks something like this. Um, you can see that the trial balance is expanded uh, from the capital account or the owner's equity account. The income statement is the statement that comes out of the expanded ledger. This shows the income, the revenues and the expenses and of course the net income or loss of the business. Revenue minus expenses equals net income or loss is the second most fundamental accounting equation. The drawings account uh, decreases owner's equity account. It works similar to the expense accounts as uh, when you debit it, it increases. When you credit it, it decreases. So it works opposite of the equity account. The income statement. So what is this used for? Who uses them? These are five of the predominant users. Owners, of course, they need to know how much profit or loss have they made. Uh, managers, uh, banks for, for uh, loaning money. Uh, investors for investing, should they invest or not. And of course, income tax authorities as they need to understand how much income tax should be uh, levied on these incomes. Again, income statement from the expanded ledger, from the trial balance. This is how the income statement should look like. You should have revenues and then you should have expenses and of course, either a net income or a loss. To sum it up, the debit credit rules, we uh, went through them last lesson as well. Uh, but just to summarize, owner's capital, you know that the uh, credit increases owner's capital and debit decreases it. Uh, owner's drawings, debit increases it and credit decreases it. In revenues, credits uh, increase them and debits decrease them. And of course, you've got expenses where the debits increase them and credits decrease them. We're going to move on to a different topic called the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts uh, is basically how we number the accounts, how we organize them for the trial balance, for the ledger. This is only an organization uh, skill or ability or an activity. It un lets you understand uh, how the, the, the accounts are numbered and how uh, they are supposed to be ordered or prioritized. So you can see that under this system, we have assets starting from thousands, uh, liabilities that uh, start with two thousands, uh, equity that starts with three thousands, revenues are four, and expenses are five thousands. So basically what it says is that you don't need to know, in an extensive accounting system, you don't need to know all the account names, as long as you can understand their numbers and their systems, um, you can see which account belongs where. As you start using some of the software in this course, you will realize that the numbering system is how they are um, organized rather than alphabetical. So for example, revenues uh, are, there can be different types of revenues like fees earned, rental income, sales, they're all under the 4,000 accounts. The next topic in this presentation is about GAAP and understanding some of the generally accepted accounting principles. The fiscal period. Fiscal period is how we measure different things in accounting. So uh, remember I mentioned that the balance sheet is a, is, a, uh, is a snapshot, but of course the income statement represents the um, revenues and expenses during a fiscal period. So a fiscal period can be a month, can be a quarter, can be a year. Generally speaking, it's usually annual. So you close the fiscal period at the end of a year and then you start a new fiscal period. Uh, people or business owners generally understand their businesses through fiscal periods. The time period concept is related to the fiscal period. It says that it assumes that the economic life of a business can be divided into these artificial fiscal periods. If you ask a business owner, they will not tell you, uh, or they will not think of uh, a fiscal period in terms of fiscal periods. They think of in terms of the success or failure of their business. They don't really say, oh, I've, I've done well this year or this month, 
and not well in the next month or next year. That's how accountants or financial analysts or other users think. So fiscal periods are an artificial way of breaking the business's timeline. Okay? So the time period concept just helps support the fiscal period concept. Revenue recognition principle is the most fundamental principle uh, that you will learn in, in, in this half of the course. Basically what it's saying is that revenues are recorded when they are earned, not when the cash is received. Revenues are recorded when they are earned, not when cash is received. So simply put, you might have a customer coming in as a, uh, if you have a business, of course, they, might, they may come in and they may pay you right away for your service or for the product. So at this point, your bank has increased, which means debit bank, and your sales have also increased, which means credit sales or revenue. However, if the same customer decides to pay you later, so you would do debit accounts receivable, as you know, and you would do credit revenue. So you have recorded the revenue, although they have not paid you cash yet. So revenue recognition principle is extremely important. You must record your revenue when it is earned, not when cash is received. The matching principle goes hand in hand with the revenue recognition principle, but the matching principle applies to the expenses. So you must match all your expenses to the revenues during that period. So if you bought something today, then you record it today if you're using it for this year or this fiscal period. If you bought something today but you're using it for the next three years, then you would record the expense in the next three years. So matching principle applies to the expenses. Basically what you're doing is you must match your expenses to the revenues in that period. Very critical to understand both of these principles and I urge you to read them and reread them until you understand them properly and apply them to the exercises as we go along the course. Owner's equity uh, is of course a separate type of account which we have now expanded into the drawings, the revenues and expenses. So right here, if you would like to uh, calculate the ending capital of an account, this is how you would calculate. You would take the beginning capital, plus or minus the net income or net loss, minus the drawings, and you would end up with the ending capital. This is part of your balance sheet. This you will use as you prepare balance sheets. This is just for your understanding, this is how it works. Okay. Balance sheet with the expanded equity section looks something like this. You can see that you've got the, uh, uh, the balance sheet uh, uh, broken up in assets, liabilities, as you, they always do, and equity. But take a look at the equity section very carefully. So you have the beginning balance, you've got the net income, you've got the drawings, anything in brackets is a, is a, a subtraction, is a negative balance, as you, as you know, uh, and then you have the ending balance. So that's how these, this section of the, uh, the, in, uh, the balance sheet looks like once you know uh, the uh, income statement exists. So briefly, debit credit rules. They are outlined on, outlined on this uh, slide. If you're having trouble doing the exercises or homework, I suggest that you take a look at this slide very thoroughly and you keep it for reference. It'll tell you um, for each type of account from balance sheet to income statement, how the debits and credits are being uh, affected uh, to the T accounts. So how does a sim uh, an income statement look like? So income statement, you can see it's, it's uh, this, you know, given you two types of examples. One is very simple and one is a bit more thorough. You've got the uh, revenues, expenses, and the net income on both sides. So this is how they look like. Uh, so income statement, as introduced to you in this chapter, basically comes out of the trial balance. The trial balance comes out of the expanded ledger. And the expanded ledger has your assets, your liabilities, your equities, and now, of course, your drawings, your revenues, and your expense accounts. Yeah. 
So I appreciate the fact that you have listened again and uh, this chapter has been concluded with this in mind. Make sure that you've got your debit and credit rules all in, in, in place and you understand that you've got assets, you've got liabilities, you've got equities, you've got revenues and expenses with all different rules for debits and credits. So thank you for listening and as always, ARTW, Accounting Rules the World.